mad. I love this for me. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Audrey. I post videos all about college, musical theater, life, boy advice. You can check out my Fuck Girl Help Hotline series that I just started because I also make TikToks about that. You can follow me on TikTok right here. It's just at Audrey Challenger. But I make all sorts of content over here on YouTube and I would love to have you a part of the family. So if you could hit the subscribe button below, I would really appreciate it. Also, if you like today's video, please hit the like button because it really helps me out with YouTube's algorithm them and it lets me know if you guys like these type of videos. So in today's video we are going to be talking about New Year's resolutions that are actually attainable and ones that you can actually stick to. I think a lot of the time we make our New Year's resolutions something very vague and ambiguous and then we don't actually have a plan for it and then we're not able to execute it. So these are pretty specific New Year's resolutions that you can implement into your life very easily that will also improve your life exponentially. So let's just get into it. So my first tip is the one touch rule and I learned this from, I don't know how you say his first name. I'm not sure if it's Matthias or Matthias, but it's Matthias J. Barker on TikTok and he is a psychotherapist. His TikTok video that I will link down below actually inspired this YouTube video because I thought he gave some great New Year's resolutions that you wouldn't necessarily think of off the top of your head and I thought they were great ideas and I was like, wow, let me just expand off of that. But shout out to him for giving me this idea. So two of my tips are literally directly from his video. It's not really me thinking about it. It was just him telling me and I was like, let me share that with my people too. So the first New Year's resolution that he talked about is the one touch rule. And that is basically just, if you pick something up, you put it back where you took it from. And I am the worst at this. I will try on a shirt and I will not hang it back up. I will drink a bubbly water and I will not throw it out or I will not empty it out after it is done. Or I will eat a bag of chips and then leave them on the table instead of rolling them up and putting them back in the cabinet. So I thought this was a very simple but smart resolution because you can always be conscious of it and you can always be like, wait, wait. One touch, put it back. Put it back where you found it because it takes you less time in the long run instead of having to have these huge cleaning days where you literally have to clean for hours and hours on end. I also am a very firm believer that your surroundings dictate your inner peace and everything like that. So when your surroundings are chaotic, your inner peace is going to be extremely chaotic and not peaceful. So having your surroundings be nice and using the one touch rule and not letting things get cluttered is a great resolution to implement into your 2022 resolution. The next one that he talked about is texting people back as soon as they text you. I really need to work on that because he talked about how when we see these text messages, we will say, oh, I'll just reply to that later when I have more mental and emotional energy to answer it. But he then emphasizes that one, it doesn't take that much energy and two, you're not going to get the energy to answer it later. You're just going to have the same amount of mental energy. It's going to take the same amount of mental energy to answer that text message so just answer it now people will like you a lot more is what he said and I was like that's so right because I really don't like when people don't answer me and then I remember that I'm really bad at answering people and it's literally nothing personal it's just a mental energy thing and emotional energy thing but it really doesn't take that much. So answer people as soon as they text you or as soon as you see their text message. Don't push it off till later because then you'll forget. The next New Year's resolution that I really want to implement is designating one day a week to cleaning everything. So just a reset day. A lot of people like to dedicate Sundays to this. I love to dedicate Sundays to this as well, but I don't have it in like a routine. And in 2022, I'd really like to get it into a routine where Sunday is my designated day where I wake up at at this certain time, go to the grocery store, clean my room, do my laundry, fold everything, put everything away, dust, clean the floors, clean your makeup brushes, and just have it all dedicated to one day because then it sets you up for a good week and takes away a lot of stressors that would normally plague you throughout the week if you just did them all on different days. It just takes care of them and then you have a great week. The next New Year's resolution is to take more pictures but also be present. I know that's kind of an oxymoron, but 
Taking so many pictures is so fun because then you get to look back on them and look back on those experiences and those memories and you kind of feel like you are brought back to that place when you get to look at those pictures. But when I say take more pictures, I mean snap the picture and put your phone down. Personally, I will never edit pictures at dinner or around other people. I will just edit them later because if I am with others, I wanna be present with others. It can come across as rude or inconsiderate if you are on your phone all the time, but taking a lot of pictures of even random things like your friend literally eating like it's funny because then you can look back on that picture and be like oh my god I remember that day I remember we did this we did this and I just think it is a great thing to have so many pictures in your camera roll and then you can also make those cute like TikTok and Instagram reels compilations of all the pictures that you've taken and even get into like film photography I'm trying to get into it but I don't know what camera to get, so. If you have any suggestions, let me know down below. The next New Year's resolution is to read before bed instead of scrolling through TikTok. I started this last night, actually, because obviously you don't have to start your New Year's resolutions like right when the New Year starts. You can start them beforehand. And I decided to read some of my book that I'm reading instead of scrolling through TikTok for hours and making my eyes super tired and then waking up super tired. And it honestly really helped. I was able to wake up at my alarm this morning and when I woke up to my alarm I then grabbed my book again and I read another like two chapters when I woke up and then started my day and journaled and I just felt in a much better headspace than I do when I am scrolling through TikTok for hours on end which I am the biggest culprit for like being home from school and not having a schedule and places I need to be and things I need to do it has been really really hard for me to just get off my phone and unplug and be away from those distractions. And I think reading is a great way to get away from those distractions. And it is one that helps your mind and your peace. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Whatever. But yes, reading before bed and even in, right when you wake up, cause that gave me a huge sense of peace this morning. Like even just a chapter helps. So definitely consider doing that as one of your new year's resolutions. That is one that I am hundred percent doing. My next new year's resolution is to Journal every morning, even when you don't feel like it. I have a hard time with this one too, just because sometimes I just wake up really late and don't have the time. But even if you can just jot down something in your notes on your phone, that's better than nothing. Even if it's just a brain dump, being like, I'm tired today, don't feel like doing this. It just allows your body to like get something out and get your brain to just be like, that's how I feel. And then write a few things you're grateful for. And I guarantee you, you will see more happiness and joy in the little things when you do something like that and write what you're grateful for in the morning and acknowledge your feelings and just basically put them on paper and let them out because sometimes we bottle them up and then take them out on other people and that's no good for anybody so getting them down on paper writing what you're thankful for is a practice that we should all implement and doing it every day even when you don't feel like it is a huge part of making it effective the next one is to dedicate a few days or or a week to purging your closet. You don't need all those clothes. You don't, I don't, you don't, we all don't. Purge your closet. There are so many people that are in need at women's shelters, homeless shelters, anywhere that would literally be so, so excited to get that Urban Outfitters shirt that you don't really wear anymore. Or even that shirt in your closet that still has tags on it that you got a year ago that you have never worn. Or if you are in need for some extra cash, purging your closet can be great you can post it on Poshmark or Depop or make an Instagram for your clothes personally I liked making an Instagram because I felt like it drew more traffic to the page but it's really personal preference because when you do the Instagram then you have to pay for the shipping on your own you have to like make the label on your own it's a little annoying so Poshmark and Depop are also great options but yeah purging your closet is definitely a great way to start out the year hopefully I will have time to purge what I have here at home before I head back to school. And then when I head back to school, I'm definitely going to be purging that closet because it is overflowing, it's so bad. And it also makes room for new clothes, new clothes, new clothes. And you can get money for new clothes if you sell them on Poshmark, Depop, or Instagram. So just do it, you know? And my last but not least tip is to invest or save a certain amount of money each week. So for me, I actually think I invest around like $25 a week and I invest that in all different stocks. I do it in ETFs 
I weirdly know about stocks. I watch YouTube videos, I watch Graham Stephan, I like finance. So if you ever want me to make a video about that, well, let me know. I actually found out that my friends today had no idea that they need more than one credit card. If you guys ever want me to make a video about the credit cards I have and why and what they work for, let me know, let me know, weirdly. I, I, I think I should make a video about that because I think a lot of people literally don't know. But anyway, back to my point. Invest or save a certain amount of money each week. I would say invest because of compound interest because it will most likely go up if you invest in like the S&P 500, like if you do an ETF like I think it's SPY. Give me a second. Let me look on Robin Hood. This is not financial advice, by the way. This is not financial advice. Don't come for me. I don't know what I'm doing. This is based on my opinions and what I do. Okay? Okay. But yeah, if you want to invest in the S&P 500, that always has an average return of like 25% each year. Something like that. I don't know. But for me, I automatically invest in like two different stocks each week. I think it's like I invest 15 in one and then 10 in the other, something like that. It's just a great way for my investments to grow over time. And for me, you know, as a literal 21 year old college student to not be putting like thousands and thousands of dollars in the stock market at a time because I can't afford to do that right now, but I can afford, you know, $25 a week. So figure out what you can afford and just try to even put $5 a week in because it will add up and you will be so grateful that you did it. So definitely consider saving or investing a certain amount of money a week. Also, if we're talking about savings, if you are too afraid of the stock market and you would rather save, I suggest opening a high interest savings account instead of putting it in a regular savings account because if you put it in a regular savings account, your money is going to decrease in value most of the time because of inflation. Whereas if you put it in a high interest savings account, it will grow because it has a like higher interest. You gain more money from having money in their bank for some reason. I don't know how it works, couldn't tell you. Don't ask me, but it works. And personally, I use Marcus by Goldman Sachs and I can put a link for that down below. But yeah, even just putting $5 a week towards it and you can set up automatic investments and automatic savings, I believe. So just doing that, your future self will thank you and you will be amazed at how much money is then in the account by the end of the year. And you'll be really happy about it and you'll be like, oh man, uh, hello of this for me. I know, I am a musical theater major, so I sing. I sing, sing, sing. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you got an idea for a new New Year's resolution that you are going to stick to and that seems doable for you. And I hope you all have a happy new year and I hope you are all healthy and staying safe in this surge. I'm a crow crow, she can just go away. She sucks, but I am praying for all of you that you are safe and healthy. And I love you so much and thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.